Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee, the ranking Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, joins me now from Chattanooga. Senator, thanks for being here. Throughout this crisis, it seems Russia has said one thing and then done another. They told the White House they were not trying to annex Crimea, and then they annexed Crimea. They said they weren't sending operatives into eastern Ukraine. Of course, we saw how that played out. Now they, of course, are making promises on behalf of the protesters. Do you think the U.S. is getting played here? I, uh, I mean, I've never seen a more confusing statement be issued where, you know, in essence, uh, everybody agrees to something and then people in Ukraine are, in, in, you know, understanding it in a different way. And obviously the actions on the ground, as you're mentioning, have nothing to do with what was agreed to yesterday. So, look, I, I think the administration has created this air of permissiveness. I've said this time and time again. What we did in Syria by jumping into Russia's lap and letting them drive policy there after the chemical weapons issue came to the forefront has really been informative, I think, to the people of Russia and candidly our allies. And I think they are, in fact, uh, playing us. Instead of us moving ahead with sectoral sanctions, which we've been urging them to do to push back on Russia, instead we continue to watch what they're doing and try to respond to that. But it seems that Jake, in doing so, we create a policy that's always a day late and a dollar short, and we don't have the desired outcome that we'd like to see hap happen for our nation and for our nation's interest. Senator, as the ranking Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I just have to ask, the, your leader, Mitch McConnell, said that we should be providing, the U.S. should be providing uh, lethal aid, arms, to the Ukrainians. Should we? I have to tell you, Jake, uh, you know, we signed the Bucharest uh, Memorandum. Uh, we said we would support uh, their sovereignty when they gave up nuclear weapons back in 1994. It does appear right now, I saw someone else refer to this, that we're kind of holding their coat while they're dealing with this issue. And I think it's time for us to consider anti-tank weaponry, anti-aircraft weaponry, obviously, uh, Russia is going to far outman them. We understand that. But we need to make sure that they understand they're going to pay a price if they do come in. And I do think it's time for us to, to look at doing that. As a matter of fact, uh, we are developing some language on that front right now. So, yes, I think it's time for us to be doing that.